Welcome to another video on using Devo. Today I'm going to show you how to test a fuel pump circuit and identify if you have a defective fuel pump or if you have an electrical problem. Now we've all been in this case before where we have a crank no start, perhaps you've already tested fuel pressure and it was not within specification. And the next step that we're looking at is if we should replace the fuel pump. Now of course some people may just buy another fuel pump and throw it in and see if that fixes it. Definitely not the recommended way to uh, test and diagnose a fuel pump, especially because it can get very expensive. And replacing fuel pumps on a lot of cars may even mean dropping the entire fuel tank to access the fuel pump. And that's a lot of work to go through to put a new fuel pump in, only to realize that you have a wiring or electrical problem, and that was the problem all along. So rather than being a parts replacer and just grabbing a new one off the shelf and throwing it in to see if that fixes it, I'm gonna show you how you can use Devo quickly and easily identify if you have a fuel pump that's defective or if you have an electrical problem. So without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. On this vehicle, the fuel pump is directly underneath the rear seat, really easy to access. We're just gonna remove the rear seat and I'm gonna do that by pulling the tabs. There's one on each side and they pull straight out and it lifts that rear part of the seat up and the seat comes out just like that. There are four screws to the fuel pump cover so I'm going to remove those. And once I've got the last screw out, this cover just comes right off. Now, to make it a little easier, I'm going to push this grommet and kind of pull it out. That just makes it a little bit easier to get this off. Actually, I'm going to go the other way with it. And I can slide that all the way off. Now I'm going to unplug the fuel pump connector and I'm going to do that by squeezing the tab right here and pulling it straight out. Now ideally I'd like to have a wiring diagram because it would make it a lot easier to identify the positive and negative circuits of the connector as well as the pins that energize the fuel pump. There are other circuits here that look at things like the fuel level as well as fuel tank pressure. And I'm only interested in this case in testing the fuel pump. If you don't have a wiring diagram, there are a couple of tricks that we can try to see if we can identify the wires and circuits without the diagram. You can't look at the front of the connector and determine which is my positive and negative circuits because all of the pins are the exact same size. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to access the back of the connector. On this particular connector, there's three different tabs right here that hold this uh, piece on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gently just going to pry up on each one of these. and now I can see the back of my connector. Now here's a little trick that I'm gonna to use to determine what my positive and negative wires are without looking at a wiring diagram. I know that the fuel pump is going to use anywhere between three to five amps, and that's quite a bit of current. So I know that the wires that support that current flow have to be bigger. When I look at the options of wires here, I can see this blue wire right here is uh, a little bit smaller. This is more like an 18 gauge, as well as this black wire is an 18 gauge. And those are actually the only other two wires on here. Some fuel pumps, of course, are gonna have more wires than that. And then I can see right here that I have a bigger black and red wire, and these look more like, uh, like a 16 gauge wire. So I know that these are the two wires that have to be for the fuel pump. I'm also gonna take a guess that black is going to be my negative and red is gonna be my positive. Although that's not the case for every circuit, um, we're gonna just take a guess and, and assume that that's probably right for this one. Now knowing that, and that's my positive and negative right there, I can see which way this connector goes on to the fuel pump, and I can now determine that this is the positive and negative. That means these are the positive and negative, which means down here in my connector, this is for the positive and negative. As always, I'm going to be using the Devo Pro Kit. I'll start off by connecting the included 22-foot leads directly to the vehicle's battery. On the left side of Devo, it says battery, and that's where I'm going to plug the other end of the 22-foot leads. Now, the first step in diagnosing is to always make sure that you test your battery voltage. We just did that because we can see on the left side of Devo, it says 12.45 volts. I also get a green LED and it says okay. That tells me that my battery is okay and ready for testing. 
Now, since I've already disconnected the fuel pump, the first thing I'm going to do is test the fuel pump itself. Now, this is very similar to doing a continuity test. In fact, we are testing continuity or resistance of the fuel pump, but using Devo, we're actually able to more accurately test the resistance of the fuel pump than a typical multimeter in ohms. The multimeter in ohms is very passive. It puts out a very small amount of voltage and current, and the results are not always as accurate as they should be. With Devo, we can actually apply a full battery voltage to it and a lot more current, simulating what the fuel pump is used to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm use the Devo forward probes. And I'm gonna connect that to the terminals of my fuel pump. So these are the two terminals that energize the fuel pump. Again, not testing the fuel level sensor, just the fuel pump. Now I need to connect one of these forward probes to a known good ground. For most fuel pumps, it doesn't matter which one you use, so I'm just gonna pick this one right here, plug in my five foot test lead to it, and this side of it, I'm gonna connect to a known good ground. Now here's an unpainted piece of metal I believe that it's a good ground, but I'm not 100% certain. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use Diva to test to see if that actually is a known good ground. So on the right side where it says circuit, I'm gonna plug my test lead onto that side and I'm specifically testing for a known good ground. So I'm on the negative side. Now I know that's a good ground because I get a green LED and it says 0.00, .00 volts, which is what we wanna see on ground. So knowing that, I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to reconnect my red test lead to that ground. So that red test lead connected to ground is coming through here and it's going through one of the forward probes that goes through the terminal into my fuel pump. Again, it doesn't matter which, which terminal or which forward probe you use. Um, we just want ground to one of those. The other test lead here that I have connected to the negative side of Devo, I'm going to plug into the other forward probe. Now here, even though we're looking at voltage, it corresponds exactly to the way that you're used to of looking at resistance testing. The lower the number, the lower the resistance. The higher the number, the higher the resistance. So here we have 0 0.07 volts dropped across that fuel pump. That means that we have some resistance in that fuel pump. If it said 0.00, .00 or even 0 0.01, I would suspect the fuel pump of being shorted. If we had a high value, such as a couple of volts, we would know that the fuel pump has high internal resistance. And if it read all the way up to full battery voltage, in this case 12.3 volts, we would know that the fuel pump was open. So this is, again, the same test of what you're used to testing on resistance. The only difference, again, is that we're applying full battery voltage to it and a higher current than what your multimeter does. So this gives us a much more accurate picture and idea of how that fuel pump is operating. All right, now here's what's really cool is that there's already a list of components with known good values on Devo's website. So from the Devo homepage, I'm gonna go up here to how-to videos at the top and click on that. I'm gonna scroll down to how to test components. Now here's instructions on how to test components, which is exactly what we went over today. And the cool thing is, is that it doesn't matter what component you're testing. So here we did a fuel pump, but if you did a light bulb, a blower motor, a power window, you're gonna test those components the exact same way. Down here we have three expandable tables. So for components, I'm gonna click on that. And here's a list of many components. Now this list is constantly being updated and uh, being added to. So if you don't see a component on there right now, be sure and check back. Here we see for our fuel pump, 0 0.08 is a typical voltage value for that fuel pump. We saw 0 0.07 and so we can feel confident that that fuel pump is within specification. That's a very good value of what we see with other fuel pumps. Now I do wanna note that the values on here are general guidelines. They're not precise and exact for every vehicle and every component. You will see different fluctuations between models, between components, and this is just to give you a general idea of what that value is. Really the main thing you wanna focus on is if the component has a shorted value, which is close to zero volts, or if it shows 
the same as battery voltage, which is an open. So I know in this case, the fuel pump is not open, it's not shorted, and it has some resistance to it. So knowing that, I don't suspect the fuel pump, I'm gonna move on and test the fuel pump circuits. To do that, I'm gonna disconnect my ground that I have here, and I'm going to disconnect my forward probes. I'm also gonna remove those from the fuel pump because we're done testing that. I'm gonna disconnect the alligator clip on my test lead, and I'm gonna plug this one in to the right side of Devo where it says circuit. So now I've got both my test leads connected there. And I'm ready to go ahead and test these circuits to the fuel pump. Now there's two different ways that I can do this. The first is that I can use the forward probes and I can forward probe both the terminals, leave Devo in load mode and test the circuits that way. The other way is that I can plug this into the fuel pump and I can carefully back probe both of the wires to get the most accurate results is to use the back probing method. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the Devo back probes and I'm gonna carefully back probe the wire there. Now this is a little bit riskier because one, you have to be careful not to damage the wires, the terminals, the weather stripping in the back, and two, you have to be really careful that you're actually testing the circuit. And what we're doing here is that this back probe is going into the connector and we're touching the terminal, the metal terminal that's inside there. And that's why it's a little bit trickier to do because if you don't hit that terminal perfectly, you never make contact and you can't accurately test the circuit. A lot of times people get uh, bad results or inaccurate results because they didn't actually test the terminal. So if you do this method, which again, I think is more accurate and that's why I prefer it, it's just a little trickier to do. You also wanna make sure that your back probes don't touch each other because if they do, you're gonna create a short. Now that I've got my back probes in, I'm gonna reconnect this connector. Now I can connect my test leads to the back probes. I see my circuit negative is good. I've got a green LED and zero volts on the ground side, which is what I want. The positive side is red LED and has a full battery voltage or a full loss, but that's because that my circuit is not activated. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna key the ignition to the on position. That will prime the fuel pump where it's gonna run for two seconds and then it's gonna shut off. I saw when I turned the ignition switch to the on or run position, my circuit positive LED went yellow. That told me I had a medium amount of voltage drop and my voltage loss was in the 0.3 range. So that's a excellent circuit. Now, of course, there's gonna be voltage drop on every circuit. So you're not always gonna see perfect green LEDs for every circuit you test. In a lot of cases, you will get yellow LEDs because a medium amount of voltage drop is not a bad thing. It's a natural occurrence that happens. So we saw a yellow LED. I saw that voltage loss of 0.3 volts. So I know that the positive and negative circuits are good and the fuel pump is also good. Because I'm working with the vehicle that runs, there's no problem with the fuel pump or the positive or negative circuits. You get to see what that would look like. I'm gonna start the car so we can see it with it running. And my circuit negative stays very low. Again, I get that green LED and I only have a 0.04 volt loss. So I know that that's excellent, no problems there. And on the positive side, I get that yellow LED. Again, a medium amount of voltage drop is not a bad thing. 0.37 volts is a very low voltage drop for a fuel pump circuit on the positive side, especially when you think about all the things it has to go through. It's going through fuses, it's going through relays, it may be coming from even a control module. In some cases, they go through the ignition switch. There's so many different circuits that the positive side will go through. A 0.37 volt loss is very good. If you wanna see the voltage available, a quick press of the mode button, that cycles to our voltage available. So we can see that we have around 14 volts available. That's what I love so much about the voltage loss mode is because here the engine's running, so the alternator's charging and going up and down. We're currently at 14.36 volts. So rather than trying to subtract that yourself, um, although in this case it's pretty easy because 14.36 minus 14 is 0.36 volts, but 
as that alternator charges and it, it changes the voltage value and it goes up and down, oftentimes it's really hard to try to see what your actual voltage loss is. It's hard to try to subtract those numbers because they're changing so much. So that's why I prefer the voltage loss mode and it just subtracts those values for me. I see I have a 0.37 volt loss, so this circuit is excellent. Of course, all the tests I did in this video are on a known good. Obviously the car runs, so we know that the fuel pump is good, we saw that value, and the positive and negative circuits are good. Now if you're testing a vehicle that's a crank no start, and you've already tested fuel pressure, and that wasn't within specification, you would have found a problem here. Either the fuel pump would have been defective, or you would have had an electrical problem on the positive or negative circuits. Now, I know this video was a bit longer than most of the others, and that's because I was covering a lot of the theory and basics. The actual testing of a fuel pump only takes a few seconds, and once you're comfortable with that, you can test many other components the exact same way. So thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe so you can catch all of our new videos. Check us out on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.